Hi, and welcome back to my shop. In the last episode, I completed the sliding dovetails for the blades or drawer dividers on the case. My next step is now to put the second dividers in, which will basically connect these right angles that jut out on the stepped front. So instead of having sliding dovetails going into the case, these are gonna be sliding dovetails that will go down, and that'll be a much more solid joint because this is kind of a fragile piece that juts out right here. So I'll show you how I'm gonna do that and how it will lock together with the sliding dovetails that I've done for the first dividers. Now, to make this sliding dovetail a little bit easier to cut, you can see that there's a shallow shoulder on the bottom, and that'll let it just kind of sit on top there and let me scribe my line. What else is kind of critical here is that the depth of this dovetail, because these blades are the exact same length as the existing blades I already cut, it needs to be the same depth as the sliding dovetail I did here. So I just take my combo square, drop it in the existing dovetail socket for the first blade, snug it up, and tighten it. And I know that that is the depth of the dovetail that I need to cut. Now because this rabbit is on the underside of the case, you're not gonna see it. So it's really not that critical that I have a really crisp shoulder there. Ordinarily, I would probably use a marking knife and I might hand cut that shoulder or use the marking knife and then go to my table saw. In this case, it's just not that important. What is important though is that it's the right depth. So I've got my blade set to about 3 16 of an inch high, and that's how, how deep this, this rabbit's gonna be. And I have a piece of scrap stock here. And I just am dropping my combo square against the blade and setting my fence so that it just touches the edge of my combo square so that I know that it's gonna be the same depth as what I already have with the, uh, the first blade dovetails. Then all I have to do is slide this back a little bit, clamp it in place, and then that's gonna serve as my depth guide. The other key item I need to keep in mind is that I wanna make sure that this dovetail is far enough away from this front face of the side that I don't run the risk of blowing the dovetail out. Now, one of the advantages to the fact that I am cutting this socket down into the end grain is that that's gonna be a much stronger joint because I've got the long fibers of the wood that'll basically be holding the outside of that socket together. To make sure that I set the inside dovetail as far back into the case as I can without it, obviously I don't want it to recede beyond the front of this piece or else I won't be able to slide it down. So I'm just going to make sure that the, the front is sitting flush with the front of the stepped piece on the side. And I'm just going to make a little mark here indicating where the very edge of the inside of that dovetail can be. I've gone ahead and darkened my mark a little bit so that you can see it on the camera. Um, I've kind of found that trying to use pencil on uh, this butternut really doesn't show up that well. So I am actually gonna switch to a Sharpie for this. And my plan is to just you know, completely remove the Sharpie line when I cut the dovetail and that way you won't see any residual ink left over. But going back to my dovetail marker, I know that that, that mark represents the farthest point I can go with this dovetail. So I'll just give that a quick little mark there. And then to mark the other end, I wanna make sure that I have enough material left so that I don't run the risk of blowing out that shoulder on the case. So I'm just gonna kinda of sight this by eye and that looks like enough stock remaining for me to have a socket that's safely not gonna blow out. So I've got it in my vise, and I've got my X's marked, so I know I'm cutting on the proper side of my line. And again, I'm gonna to try to 
just remove the black line all the way around. Now that I've got the, the tail actually cut, uh, I just need to waste out the excess. Now, for this joint, the only really important shoulder that needs to be nice and crisp is the front shoulder, which is this face here. The back really isn't that important because it's gonna be covered up by that top um, divider. So you're never really gonna see even if there are gaps in there. So I'll probably just cut this off with a cross cut saw because it can be a little bit rougher, but this front face is going to be front and center on the piece. So I am gonna wanna really set that shoulder nicely with my chisel to make sure that it's a nice crisp line. I'm just gonna make a couple of relief cuts. To make sure that when I define that shoulder, I don't push the shoulder back beyond my marking line. And then I can just go in and waste that out. excess will pop right out and then I've got a nice clean crisp front shoulder. For this back shoulder all I'm gonna do is make a little V wide enough for me to drop my saw blade or my saw kerf in there and then I'm just gonna cut this back one by hand again you're not gonna see it so it's really not gonna matter if it's a little bit rough around the edges. I'm still going to pay attention to my line, of course. So just like that, I've got my nice dovetail, the crisp front shoulder, and I've got the rabbit in the bottom so that I'll be able to reference it against that top surface and mark my socket. So now I've got all of my dovetails cut. And this is where things start to get a little bit tricky because there are a lot of moving parts going on at once. And frankly, sliding dovetails are finicky joints. So it was important, first of all, for me to reassemble the case and put my, um, my first set of dividers in there in, into their sliding dovetails. And I've also clamped up the case. And that's important too because when I cut these or when I mark the... Uh, the sockets for these dovetails, I wanna make sure that my case is pretty much set exactly where it's gonna be when it's finally glued up. If I didn't have these clamps on here, the case sides might be bowed out a little bit. Um, they might not be completely snug up in the, uh, the, the top shoulders here. So I really wanna make sure it's, it's where it's gonna be when it's finally glued up so that I can make sure these will actually fit in. Now the trick here is that I can't mark for my dovetail sockets with the divider still in here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna keep the clamps on, I'm gonna keep the other two dividers on, and then just remove each divider as I go so that the case is still secure. But then I can drop the top divider in there and line everything up and then mark my sockets that way. And that'll ensure that once this is glued up, all these pieces will still fit together. So I'm on to the uh, number two divider here. And really the only critical part is that the front of the divider is completely flush with the front of the side. And that's gonna make sure that everything slides into place nicely. And then I just need to hold it securely and then mark my socket. Now the only real challenge here is that I have no way of marking the inside of my dovetail because I can't 
possibly get my knife in there. So I'm going to have to use an alternate method to mark the inside of that socket. So this is going to require a little bit of a creative solution. So I happen to have a protractor square that basically lets you set the angle instead of always being at a square. So I'm taking the marking gauge I used to mark the original dovetail and I'm basically setting this protractor to the exact same angle and I lock that down and that gives me kind of the at least the right angle to work with. And then I can come back over to the shoulder and basically just set the depth of this thing so that it just reaches the inside of the case and then I can lock it down. And the trick here is that I know again that the edge of the dovetail meets this angle right here where that other dovetail socket meets. So that allows me to just drop this protractor in there and then I can mark that inside edge like that. Now it may not be completely perfect. I mean, in, a per in an ideal world, you always want to be marking against the actual piece itself. But assuming that I used, um, that I sawed to my angle properly, this should be as close as I'm going to be able to get because um, there's no way I can get the knife in there any other way. Now that I've got all of my layout lines marked, I have to go in and define the uh, edges of each socket with my dovetail saw. Now the challenge I have here is that I have no problem doing the outside edge of the socket, but the inside edge, if I were to cut with the saw, I would actually be hitting into the side, or in fact the front of the side right here. So I'm only going to be able to define the outside edge of each dovetail socket. The inside edge I'm going to have to get a little bit more creative on. To waste out the material in, in the sockets and to also define that inside shoulder edge, I'm going to rely on um, mostly chisels. So I'm going to use my mortising chisel to pare down and start wasting out that way. The other challenge I have is that then to go and clean out the waste, I have to use my crank neck chisel, otherwise the handle of the chisel hits against the board here. And then I'm going to use my half inch chisel to go in and just periodically define that inside edge that I couldn't get the saw into and that should allow me to waste everything out pretty effectively. I've got my case reassembled now one more time and I'm going to see if I can get the number one blade to drop in on the first try. I did test one side but not the other. Do you get a fit there? And then the way that'll work with the other blade will slide right in on top of it. And it should sit flush and these two will get glued together so there's a little bit of play there but once those are glued together that'll be a nice rigid divider and here you can see a little closer up exactly how those two dovetails sort of mesh together you can see there's a little bit of a gap uh, here and a little bit of a gap here but once I get this glued and the case will kind of draw everything together, that'll, that'll tighten up a little bit. But that's, I mean, without any glue in there, if I sort of hold these two blades together, um, that is a rock solid joint. So if I put a uh, glue in those joints, this is gonna be a really, really rigid way to join a case together.